Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Stefan Monte. I work for Sogeti High Tech. Sogeti High Tech is a, is a company from the Cadimini Group, which is a big group. And at Sogeti High Tech, we are dedicated to uh, engineering and R&D activities. And myself, I'm specifically in charge of uh, the machine-to-machine -machine domain and uh, offering. So machine-to-machine -machine is about uh, Internet of Things, and it's also about uh, smart home solution. So we are going to talk today about um, some technical stuff, the solution on the market, the different actors, the ecosystem, the architecture models uh, that are standardized sometimes, the key technologies, and uh, we will uh, um, finally discuss about some advanced scenario uh, and some trends. So just before starting, I wanted to recall that a smart home solution is not quite something new. It's, uh, uh, you may remember some uh, uh, nice movies from the 50s or the 60s, especially uh, Mon Oncle from Jacques Tati, uh, where there are very nice uh, and complete smart home uh, solutions, uh, fully automated houses. But in the end, uh, it was maybe not so much convenient for the, uh, for the users, and uh, we don't know who controls who? Uh, does the house control the human, or the human controls the house? That's a question. Uh, but this is more the, the real uh, chronology of uh, smart home and home automation. Uh, so it's uh, contextual information about uh, this uh, domain. It all started in the 80s, uh, so 20 or 30 years ago, uh, with some very basic solution for comfort and home automation. Uh, so it's about uh, controlling the light, controlling the opening, the shutters, and, and so on. Uh, very close, there was some um, solution for security, for um, home monitoring, for alerting when there is an intrusion in, in the home. This is now very uh, mature and, and uh, um, established uh, market. So if we, if we go in the, the, the more uh, current um, period, uh, there is a lot of solution now for energy efficiency, especially to control um, the energy consumption in the home. So uh, you may have at home some uh, smart meters uh, with your utility. You may have some uh, uh, thermostats that you can control either locally or maybe uh, from a remote location. There are also some smart, smart plates that you can use to, to control your home appliance and electric equipment. Video surveillance is also, um, is also um, a domain of, uh, of smart home. You can uh, monitor your house uh, while you are uh, in a remote location, uh, have a look to what's happening in the different rooms. That's uh, a possibility today. Home entertainment is something new again, and it's part of smart home. If we consider that uh, um, home entertainment devices like uh, game console or media, uh, media centers, TV screen that are connected now, uh, more and more connected to the, um, to the home network. Uh, they can interact with the other uh, home devices and with the uh, end users, and uh, they can embed some uh, intelligence for, for, the, for the home. Um, an important uh, acquisition was done recently by Microsoft, um, a home automation uh, company. Uh, which is now part of the Xbox department uh, at uh, Microsoft. So we, we, we can expect uh, in the near future that the X Xbox uh, product will, uh, will integrate some uh, smart home um, features. So health and wellness is also a domain which is a, a big trend for the future. So e-health, for example, um, based on uh, specific uh, devices, uh, that you can uh, use to, to monitor your own health, maybe to communicate with a, with a doctor in a, in a remote location. And wellness uh, also for devices that are more targeting uh, sports and uh, stuff like that. And of course, uh, domestic robotics. Uh, there was a very interesting conference just before about uh, vacuum cleaners. It's now becoming more and more popular on the market. Uh, it represents a fairly good uh, uh, market share today, but beyond uh, vacuum cleaner, we can expect some more advanced robotics in the home uh, in the near future. Um, maybe, for example, to, uh, to, monitor, to, uh, to help um, uh, old people to, to have a, a remote presence, to, to communicate, to alert uh, remotely. So if we consider now uh, the different actors that are involved in this uh, market, 
I have displayed here uh, several categories. First, there are the manufacturers. Uh, they were the first uh, kind of company involved in that kind of solution, providing hardware products. In France, for example, we have big uh, companies like Le Grand, Schneider Electric. Deltador is a, is a company which uh, provides a smart home solution and uh, uh, alarming systems. And of course, there are other solutions. My, my colleagues from Freescale will, will present some, uh, some uh, components and uh, sensors uh, just after me. There are pure players also. So that's, that's companies that provide end-to-end um, -end solutions, so it integrates uh, uh, hardware, uh, services, software, and so on. It's smaller companies, but uh, it's very interesting. So you can now buy some uh, complete smart home solution and install them uh, at home. Um, so most players are based in the, in the US today, but there are a few ones in Europe. Uh, for example, Alatmi in the UK and a few ones in, in France too. There are also software and service providers, IT service providers. So there are here the, the regular uh, player, big player like IBM or Capgemini, Sogeti, us. Uh, we provide uh, software components and services for integration. But we, we must also here uh, mention the other big players for especially the B2C market, so Google, Apple, uh, Microsoft, uh, are very interested in a smart home solution and they have announced some uh, initiatives uh, in the past year in this domain. And finally, uh, two other kind of actors, the uh, operators, the telecom operator and uh, the utilities that distribute energy. Um, that kind of actors have a strong relationship with uh, with the end users, and they are in a good position to propose uh, in their offering, a smart home offering, in addition to their um, core business today. So just a quick word about uh, the market. It's a growing market. Um, um, Juniper Research, which is an analyst, expected to be a $60 billion market uh, in 2017. And for them, it's mainly driven by um, connected entertainment. So now it will become a little bit more technical. Uh, if we have a look to a typical uh, smart home solution at home, uh, how is it made? So it's uh, basically uh, two parts. The, 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 home, uh, the home part, so here in, on the left-hand side of the, the diagram, in the home you will have uh, different kind of sensors and actuators, controllers, so presence detection, camera, uh, smart plug, smart thermostat, etc usually have um, a home control box that is able to communicate with the different uh, sensors uh, through wireless connectivity most of the time. And this home control box is also able to, uh, to display a user interface, um, several user interface. It can be connected to the TV screen. It can be uh, also interacting with uh, tablets, user tablets, user PC. Uh, so with an, app an application that allows you to control your equipment locally. So that's the, the local part. On, on the right-hand side of the diagram here, we, we see cloud services because today uh, many uh, smart home solutions are connected to the internet. Um, this connectivity allows uh, different things. Uh, it allows uh, for the end users to, uh, to be able to connect to his home uh, while uh, in a remote location. So you can, you can control your equipment. You can, for example, adjust the temperature uh, if you are living. Uh, you can receive alerts. And there are also the capability uh, in the cloud services to provide uh, an interface for service providers, like uh, security uh, companies that can monitor uh, your house for you uh, in case of uh, intrusion, for example. So the cloud services uh, uh, is also a, a possibility to, uh, to store uh, business data, to have uh, historical data and additional services, mashup, etc. So if we summarize, smart home is about uh, connected object. It's really the Internet of Things, sensor, actuator, user device that are all connected together. It's about embedded software in the house, in the different uh, devices. And it's also about cloud-based software and services for remote access and for information mashup uh, with different uh, online services. So we can say that smart home is a, is a specific application of the Internet of Things. Internet of Things is also uh, sometimes called Web of Object or Machine to Machine, which is more the industrial part of uh, Internet of Things. 
So if we talk about machine to machine for the smart home domain, there is one specific standard, standardization organization, which is called the ETSI. ETSI is for European Telecommunication Standardization Institute. And the ETSI is really today the main standardization uh, agency in Europe. And they work on smart home uh, and um, M2M solution. The, they have been working on that for many years. Uh, providing some uh, recommendation, architectural recommendation and specification. So here I have uh, replicated the, uh, the basic diagram, architectural diagram from, from the ETSI. Uh, it's uh, generic for machine to machine, but it can be applied to, to smart home. So we, we can distinguish here three main domains. The, the device domain, which is the, the, the home area. The network domain, which is about uh, communication on, on the wide area network and the application domain, which is about providing business application uh, for B2C users or B2B, B2B users. Um, I will detail that in the next slide, but um, um, an important uh, uh, part of the uh, LC specification is about the different interfaces between each layer. So here you, you, you can see the DLA interface on the left, which is in the house. It's, it's the, the, the communication and the protocol between the devices and the home gateway. MLD is the interface between the gateway, the home gateway, and the cloud services. Uh, and MLE, MLE is uh, the, uh, the interfaces, which is web services most of the time, between uh, middleware uh, solution on the uh, network domain and uh, application, uh, business application solution. So the FC specification is uh, really something public, so you can access it on the internet. It's, uh, a uh, large amount of uh, document and pages, but it's very interesting, and uh, it really shows uh, uh, the maturity of, uh, of this uh, area. So now if we uh, drill down a little bit in the um, kind of uh, smart home architecture, um, on the left again we have the, the home, and we can distinguish in the home two different networks. Uh, there is uh, the main network that you already have in your house uh, through your, uh, your uh, router or gateway. It's a local uh, network based on the IP protocol. And you can, of course, already today uh, um, plug on this network different kind of devices, uh, your home devices, uh, tablets, but also uh, web camera, uh, media, media server, um, game console, and so on. And there is, for smart home, uh, another kind of, uh, of um, network, which is called the PAN, or WPAN, which means wireless personal area network. And this kind of protocol is uh, specific in the sense that it's a uh, low consumption uh, protocol uh, that are used on this network. And low consumption is very important to uh, communicate with, uh, with uh, sensors and devices that are autonomous, that are powered through a uh, battery. Uh, that, should, uh, that should last uh, sometime uh, several years. So two, two kinds of networks in the home, and the home control box is really the central uh, system that coordinates all the interaction between the different devices and the different protocols and the application logic locally. So again, we have uh, the capability with uh, that kind of home installation to communicate on the cloud, to communicate on the internet. And we can, the, the cloud service uh, box here on the side shows two different uh, level of services. There will be, there is already today some end user services uh, providing, for example, uh, interaction for, for the end users while, while uh, in a remote location to interact with this house. And there are, there are also the capability to provide back office services, which are more for operators that can manage the fleet of devices uh, that can be alerted uh, if they provide, for example, a monitoring service. So this is a logical architecture. I will um, present a few technologies that are uh, very common uh, in this architecture. For the WPAN network, ZigBee is very popular. Uh, you may have heard about it. ZigBee is a, probably today the most open uh, standard on the market uh, that we can use to uh, implement uh, low consumption uh, interaction between uh, small uh, devices and uh, home control box. It's very wide also. It can support many kind of use cases uh, from uh, um, controlling uh, uh, your shutters, controlling uh, um, energy consumption, etc. 
there are some competitors like uh, Z-Waves, uh, KNX, but uh, most of them are proprietary protocol. So it's um, not so much uh, uh, useful for building a, a solution that we will see that in, in a minute. Um, maybe it's interesting here to mention 6 Lopin. 6 Lopin is also an open protocol. It's a new one and it supports IPv6, um, IPv6 addressing. So it's uh, very interesting uh, for the future. Okay, uh, other kind of protocol to mention on the local OA network. Um, we can mention here, of course, uh, the web service protocol that are very now usual, but also what we called zero, configura zero configuration protocol, like UPnP or DLNA or DPWS. Those protocols will enable the um, automatic uh, discovery of new devices uh, as soon as you plug them in your uh, new network. They, they will broadcast their information, their identity and the service they provide so that the other, um, the other devices on the network can discover them and interact uh, immediately. And it's interesting also to mention a uh, messaging protocol, uh, sometimes called uh, Publish Subscribe, uh, which are very convenient for interaction between the house and the cloud services, uh, especially for alerting, it's very robust and efficient. Okay, finally, in the home control box, the kind of technology, uh, the home control box, of course, implement all those protocols and the communication, uh, the local communication, but also the, the, the wider area network uh, communication. The home control box can also implement some uh, business rules, some scenario um, that take into account the different interaction uh, between the, the devices. And to mention the technology here, OSGI, the OSGI framework, which is a, a Java technology, is very common and very convenient. I uh, will uh, focus on that a little bit later. So to summarize uh, the different protocols that can be used today, it's already the state of the art, and there will be maybe some new technology in the future. Um, on the left, the, wide, um, the, sorry, the wireless personal area network, so low consumption uh, protocol. There is ZigBee, Z-Wave. Now there is a Bluetooth Smart, um, which was known uh, in the past as Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, and there are um, also a list of um, proprietary protocol like KNX, which comes from Germany, X3D, which is a protocol from Delphiador in France. Um, for um, discovery protocol and um, zero configuration protocol, I have mentioned uh, UPnP, uh, which is very uh, generic and open, but there is also Bonjour, which is an implementation from Apple, which is available on, most, uh, on all Apple uh, devices. Uh, DPWS is, uh, I would say, the same kind of thing, but for industrial application. So the configuration is very interesting for smart home solution as it allows a very quick and easy installation of new devices, which is really uh, an important uh, uh, constraint. And finally, if we have a look to the messaging and web services protocol, we can mention here different alternatives. Uh, XMPP, which is something um, sometimes used by uh, uh, instant messaging system, but you can also use them for machine-to-machine for -machine interaction. There are some more uh, appropriate protocols like MQTT, which is a lightweight proto protocol, uh, IMQP, which is more um, an enterprise protocol, and CoAP, uh, which is important to mention here, which is uh, as, um, associated to 6 Lopin for IPv6 interaction. And of course, HTTP and, and web services that can be used between the server side and, and the local uh, installation. So again, to, um, to summarize the um, development platform that can be used for smart home solution, uh, when, uh, it's a, when you need to, to develop a solution on a home control box, uh, you have different uh, technology choices. Um, in the past, most development was, were based on low-level languages like C or C++, but today uh, there are more uh, high, higher-level uh, software uh, development uh, environment, and uh, in, in particular, the OSGI framework, which is a uh, a Java platform framework is very convenient. Uh, it's also standardized. It's uh, recommended uh, by, uh, by different organizations, especially the HGI organization, which is a home gateway initiative. Um, uh, with GI is very convenient because it's something modular. It allows to, uh, to develop an application in a modular way to update it 
So you can control the life cycle management, you can update a specific module, and you can use it. Um, I would say uh, almost like uh, today we use uh, uh, the, the, the software on, on the smartphone. You can, you can download a new, a new module, you can um, delete a module that you don't use, uh, etc. You can update them. So very convenient, and of course Android is also an option for, for the uh, home control box, as it provides uh, similar features uh, with uh, especially an application store, so the end users can, uh, can really manage their home control box as they manage today their smartphone and personalize them. So a few technology trends for the, for the future. For the future, uh, of course, there is a, uh, the standardization effort, which is quite important. It's a key thing because standardization means that uh, uh, it enables the uh, um, interoperability and integration of different kind of devices. Um, there is also some uh, nice evolution uh, in terms of user interaction through uh, voice recognition, for example, and gesture. Uh, so that's very also uh, convenient for the end users. Uh, there is strong development in the cloud services, so everything uh, in the future could be connected in the house and uh, outside the house, and uh, there can be information mashup and service mashup to provide uh, smart services for the end users. And also, uh, an interesting trend uh, since a few years is about uh, semantic technologies and intelligent agents. So here it's about providing, uh, attaching a, a meaning to the, to the data and the messages uh, that are communicated through the, through the network so that you can uh, develop automatic interaction between the device uh, themselves and, and with the end users also. So with all those uh, evolution and um, standardization, uh, here I have tried to, uh, to represent um, a possible uh, general um, architecture uh, diagram as a principle uh, architecture principle, showing the interaction between many different kind of devices, so devices that come from, from the house, the sensors that you will have in your house, but also uh, connected objects uh, in the city, uh, charging station for your vehicle, the vehicles and themselves can be connected, the public transportation can communicate information on the network about their status, uh, events, etc. Uh, and also all the um, uh, CT equipment are more and more connected uh, with monitoring, uh, etc. So, um, thanks to the, uh, to the uh, standardization effort um, and with the use of machine to machine platform, it will be possible, uh, and so it is already possible today, to have a global interaction with all those devices. Uh, and uh, you can benefit um, this interaction with the new services uh, that can inform the end users or some B2B users. Uh, and, and propose some uh, um, recommendation. Uh, um, so there are B2B or B2C applications that you can build on top of machine-to-machine -machine platform. And so here, one specific scenario that we, we can imagine uh, using that kind of uh, installation uh, for someone that wants to optimize uh, his uh, transportation every day between his home and his office, it's possible to have a uh, a global interaction between the different uh, uh, means that he will use to, uh, to, to move from the house to the office, for example, the electric vehicle, you can be directed uh, to a specific parking slot uh, with an available charging station, because today most charging stations are communicating, so you can know in real time um, which one are available. You can park your car and then the system can that you can have on your smartphone, for example, can direct you to a public transport or to a bicycle sharing service, uh, depending on which one is more efficient for you to, to reach uh, your, your office. So it's a global interaction between, uh, uh, between uh, the user, the house, the different equipment and transportation uh, that are communicating. Okay, so for the conclusion, just uh, the key thing for me uh, in the smart home domain and in the machine-to-machine -machine domain is, is about today's uh, the standardization. I have discussed a bit about the SCM2M. SCM2M is now part of 1M2M, which is a more global initiative worldwide. SC is more European. So 1M2M uh, integrates uh, most uh, 
um, uh, startups Asian organization across the world, and they, they are in the process of defining on the very short term um, 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 a common uh, standard uh, for device interaction and uh, um, cloud service interaction. HGI is a home gateway initiative, it's a small organization, but they are focused on smart home solutions, especially on the design, the software design of, um, of the home gateway. And the protocol, so the uh, zero configuration protocol, UPNP, ENNA, and the ZB protocol, which is today really the market, uh, uh, the, 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 the market leader, I would say. And about the development framework, we can mention, mention OSGI, which is a, a very good Java framework for developing um, embedded logic in the home control box. So that's it for me.